Hi, my name is Sarah Lipka. I'm an attorney with Colorado Legal Services. This video is part of a series of videos about civil protection orders and is a collaborative project with TESA and Colorado Legal Services. In this video, I'm going to talk about the paperwork or pleadings that you need to fill out to request a civil protection order. You can find these forms at courts.state.co.us. If you do not have the time or ability to fill out the forms, that's okay. Just go to the self-help center in your courthouse or the clerk and request the forms. They are free if you are seeking help with domestic violence. Most people uh, get these forms at the courthouse. All of these forms have what we call JDF numbers on the bottom of the forms that help us to keep track of them. You will need the following forms to request a protection order. JDF number 401, the incident checklist. JDF number 402, the verified complaint or motion for a protection order. JDF number 404, affidavit regarding children. And JDF number 442, information sheet for registering a protection order. Let's look at each of these forms together. We're going to start with the incident checklist. I recommend filling this one out first because it can help you to organize your thoughts for the complaint. In the incident checklist, you will write down, um, you'll see over here, there's different types of abuse. Um, you'll look at it and see which of these would apply in your case. Um, let's say in your case that there has been some grabbing. Uh, you would write down the location where the abuse occurred, the dates of the incidents, physical injury, if any, and if the police were contacted. For location, you could write the address, or you could write at your home, or um, the grocery store, or wherever the incident occurred. You can write the dates here, or if it happened a lot, you can write how frequently that happened. So that could be, for example, monthly. Then you would write if there's any physical injury, and if you contacted the police. Then you'd sign down here and date it. The next form to look at is the complaint for a civil protection order. So there are all these boxes at the top of pleadings that you'll need to fill out and that's what helps the court to keep organized. Um, in this first box over here, you'll write which type of uh, court you're in, county or district court, the county that you're in and the court address. In this box, uh, you'll put the petitioner's name here since you're the one that's filing the case, you are the petitioner and you'll put your name there and your birthday, the respondent, that's the person that you need protection from, and the respondent's birthday. Whoever is filling out a pleading will put their information in this box right here. Remember, all of these pleadings will be disclosed to the respondent, the person that you need protection from. So if your address, phone number, or email are confidential, or if you don't want the respondent to know those things, then write confidential here. Um, then the court will give you a case number. That's how the court keeps track of the cases. Um, and once you have that case number, you'll want to keep it handy when you go to court. The clerk will stamp this box, so you don't need to worry about that box. If you're starting a new case, um, which is, which is um, probably what you're doing if you're going to court, filing a new case, asking for a protection order, then you'll check the box that says complaint. If you are filing for a protection order in a case that has already been created, like in your dissolution of marriage action, then you'll check the box that says motion. Uh, let's go through this form together. You'll put your name here. Then in paragraph one, you'll check the um, reasons that you're seeking a protection order. And you can check more than one of those boxes. In paragraph two, you'll list where you work and um, uh, where you reside and the same for the restrained party and how you know the, the person that you're seeking the protection order from, how you know that person. Paragraph three, you'll list anyone else that you want to be protected, which would usually include children. If you have joint children, I find it's helpful for the judge if you write joint um, or if they're separate children, write separate. If you do have children together, then you will need to fill out the affidavit regarding children, which we will go over next. Paragraph four is really the main substance of the complaint where you're writing what has happened and why you need protection. 4A, you'll write about the most recent incident. 
4B, the most serious incident, and 4C, any other past incidents. Uh, take a uh, look up here. It says that you need to write the date that something happened, what time it was, what county you were, you were in, and who committed the act. Um, you don't have a lot of room here, so you might not want to repeat yourself. And if you find that you need more room than this piece of paper, then you can write C attached and uh, continue on a se separate piece of paper. Paragraph 4D, you'll need to disclose if there are any other protection orders against you or the other party. Paragraph 5, you'll indicate that uh, why you need the protection order. Paragraph 6, you'll check that box if you need your address to be protected. Paragraph 7 talks about the type of contact that you want to have with the restrained party. Um, it could be no contact at all, or it could be limited contact. If you have joint children, you may need to have exceptions to the protection order. I recommend that uh, the communication be in written form. There are parenting apps like Our Family Wizard or Talking Parents that you can use, um, or text or email about the children only. Paragraph C, you would list if you want to keep the, uh, if you want the restrained party to be excluded from the home. Paragraph D, you will list any other uh, places that you need the restrained party to stay away from, which could include home, work, or school, or other locations. Paragraph E, if you have joint children, you would be requesting here what you want the court to do regarding the children on a temporary basis. If there has been domestic violence, the court may issue orders about the joint children. Um, so you could say on a temporary basis, no contact, or you could say um, what type of parenting plan you would like to, to do on a temporary basis. The court can issue orders about the children for up to one year. Um, uh, and then if you need more permanent orders, then you can file a dissolution of marriage or an allocation of responsibilities action um, when and if you are ever ready to, to proceed to that. Um, paragraph F talks about animals. If you have pets or livestock together and you would like the court to take specific action, you can list what you would like to happen in paragraph F. Paragraph G is discussing firearms and ammunition if there's been domestic violence and you would like the restrained party to not to relinquish those things and not have access to them in the future, you would check that box. Um, paragraph H, um, you would check if you'd like that person to not interfere with work or school and then anything else. Um, when you, this box is um, asking you to indicate that you know that once you have a protection order, you can't modify it or dismiss it without going to the court and asking the court's permission to do that. And then I recommend not changing these forms, just filling them out. Um, so you'll need to check uh, this box saying if you've changed the forms or not. And then the verification, you are declaring under penalty of law that everything in the complaint is true and correct. And then down at the very bottom, there's some information about injunctions. You can request an injunction um, so that the restrained party does not stop making payments um, like on the mortgage or rent, car insurance, utilities, or things like that. If that applies to you, then bring that up when you're talking to the judge. The next form we're going to look at is the affidavit regarding the children. Same boxes at the top. And then uh, this, the purpose of this form is to make sure that the court knows about any other court cases that could affect custody of the children. Um, so you'll want to list your joint children here and then uh, anyone else that the children, you'll, then here you'll list where the children have lived and with whom for the last five years in paragraph three. In paragraph four, you will disclose any um, cases that, that are about the children like a divorce or what we call a dissolution of marriage. Um, an allocation of parental responsibilities action, which is another way of saying custody case. Paragraph five, you will disclose if you have been a party or a witness in any case like that. Paragraph six, you will disclose any other court proceedings that could affect a custody case. And that could include a criminal case for child abuse, 
um, or domestic violence or dependency and neglect action or any other case like that. Um, paragraph seven, you will list if there's anyone else who would be claiming that they have physical custody to the children. Paragraph eight, you are um, confirming that you know that you need to let the court know if a case gets filed um, that uh, concerns the children. So if you file these forms and then the next time you go to court, um, a divorce has been filed, then it's your obligation to tell the court about the divorce. Paragraph nine, you are indicating whether or not the Indian Child Welfare Act applies in your case. And then again, the same box is about if you modified the form or not. And then another verification that everything is true and correct. The final form that you'll need to fill out is the information sheet for registering a protection order. This is information that helps uh, with service. And again, remember that this information will be disclosed to the um, restrained party. So don't list your address or phone number if you wanna keep that confidential. Once you've filled out these forms, then you'll give them to the clerk and proceed uh, with the case. Please see the next video about the case uh, procedures for information about what happens next in your case. Thank you very much.